discussed objects in more detail. We talked about how objects are instances of classes, how they store information in methods, how we can even access those methods. And then we talked about how to declare and initialize objects using the new operator, how they take parameters, how methods take parameters. And we even discussed how they're stored in memory, how they're referenced to a memory address, and how that can lead to some interesting consequences uh, when assigning objects to each other. Now, in this video, I wanted to elaborate on methods and mention a few methods that we use uh, commonly in programming, specifically when it comes to the string object. And I want to mention another class called math, which allows you to do more um, advanced operations. So I want to talk about those two objects in particular and give you a few examples of objects that we discussed in the previous example. So string has a few methods. These are some of the most common methods we'll be uh, using with the string class. So here we have a return type. Again, if we want to store this into, if we want to store the result in a variable, what kind of variable do we have to store it into? That's basically what the return type is. Uh, it's the type of data that it gives us back. Here we have our method name. It even gives us our parameters as we discussed before. So string methods usually require parameters. Some don't, and we'll talk about those as well. And then, uh, so here it gives us the name, the parameters it requires, and even the data types of those parameters. Right? What kind? Does it need to be an int, double, string, character, so on and so forth. And then it gives us a description right here. And then over here we have an example. So let's start one by one. First we have car at, right? Uh, and then it takes in a parameter index and it says it returns the character value at the specific index. Now what does that mean? Well, let's talk about um, how strings. Strings are just a list of characters, correct? So if I have the string Java, these are just a list of characters. And if I want to count them off, I would uh, Java would be 1, A would be 2, V would be 3, and a, uh, the last A would be 4. But in compute, and it's very similar in how the computer handles it. But with computers, you start counting from 0, right? So J would have an index of 0. A would have an index of 1. I should probably write this on the top. A would have an index of 1. V would have an index of 2. And A would have an index of 3. And in, so in any, or in most computer programming languages, counting starts from 0. And these are called indexes. This is how we associate each character. This is how we list the characters in a string. And even spaces, if we have like a nut, we have a space and then we had a five, the space would be given an index, right? Because the space is a character technically. And then our uh, last uh, one would be given our index. So we have here, we have indexes zero through five, which is six characters in total. Now, car a, what it does is we take this, so we're going to store this in a string, for example. So we have this string equal to this right and then if we wanted to call this method we take str dot calling the method and then we put character at we open the parentheses and then we choose the index let's say I want to find out what's the third uh, letter in this string well the third letter is going to be the second index so I will put in two right and this will give me back the character at the third um, at the second index or the third character of the string. So this would give me V. Right? This would re give me back V. And if I want to store that, I would store it in a character data type. So I could do car letter equals this thing. And then it would store V. And we can change that. And that's how indexes work in Java. So if you ever wanted to uh, find the index of a certain character, um, now you know how indexes are stored in Java. So that's what an index is. And it's uh, used in some of the other methods as well. Next we have equals. So equals, what it will do is we'll have a string. And then it will check if it equals another string. Now this string could be another variable or you can type it in as well. Right? So Java. So does Java 5 equal Java? No, it doesn't, because this one has an extra space in a 5. So this will give us false, right? Now, if it was equal, if we made it equal, for example, I had this Java 5 over here with that space in the middle, then it would give me true. Now, here's the thing when using the equals method. It's case sensitive, which means 
if I were to delete this and just have Java and then I were to delete this and have Java but all lowercase it would give me false despite the fact it's the same word this one is lowercase whereas this one has an uppercase so these are not the same thing therefore this would give me false if I wanted to ignore the case then that's what the next method is for is equals ignore case so str dot equals ignore case assume that you write it out here Java and Java they would give you the same thing right so for example passwords when you're typing into an email or uh, an account it's case sensitive so it might use this equals method and then equals ignore case um, will not care about the uh, capitalizations between the two letters so that's our two equals methods equals and uh, equals ignore case and the reason why we have these methods will become more clear in the next video when we talk about if statements next we have index of and this what it will do is we take a string and it will return the index of the string in the given string so for example if I have the string Java and I do str dot index of and then I put in j a this will give me zero because the index of this string in here is j a it starts at zero so it basically looks at the substring and it looks to where it fits in the string as a whole and if it doesn't fit in the string it returns a negative one and if it does fit in the string it will return the value um, of where it starts off so that could be useful if you're trying to find um, a sub index or like if you're trying to find if a string is within another string so that's where that could be useful next up is our length and this one's probably one that you'll be using most often and it's very simple it just returns the length of the string not the last index right so the last index of this is 3 but the length str dot length will return four because there's four letters right so if you're trying to use the dot length um, method in order to find what's the last letter you have to do dot length minus one and then uh, the last two that we have are substrings you can see they're both substrings but they just take in different parameters and it does different things so the first one will take be the beginning index I'll look at the first index and then it will give you everything from that index going forward so it returns a substring right it gives you a smaller string so for example if I do str dot substring right dot substring and then I put in one it's going to give me everything from one all the way to the end so this is going to give me ala right now if I have um, if I have two parameters such as one and three you might be expecting it to give me everything from 1 to 3 but no it doesn't because uh, the way the substring method here works kind of weird it does the last index minus 1 so 2 so it will give us everything from a the first index to the second index why does this I don't know but that's the way it is it goes from the first index inclusive to the last index exclusive so if I wanted uh, the middle two I would do 1 to 3 if I just wanted this, the second letter, I would do 1 and 2. Because remember, the second one exclusive, and this would return A. So these are the most uh, common types. And there's another two I want to quickly mention, is that dot 2 uppercase and dot 2 lowercase. So dot 2 uppercase like that, and dot 2 lowercase like that. They don't take any parameters, and what they do is basically what the name implies the first one converts your uh, your string all to uppercase letters and the second one converts it all to lowercase letters the last method I wanted to talk to uh, talk about is the dot to string method right now the dot to string method is a method that every single object has no matter what so what the dot to string method does is it just prints out the information in the object now the to string method might print out some useful information on the object sometimes it might print out gibberish that you can't understand um, like it just might be where it's stored in the computer the memory address and stuff that you don't really need but every object has a to string method and just prints out some information now 
if you have an object, for example, our string str equals Java, if we just do str without calling a method or anything, if we just do str like this by itself, it's automatically going to assume you're calling the toString method. And that's what makes the toString method, you know, like re really cool because you don't have to explicitly call it. Is you can just do str and it calls the toString method automatically. So when I do system dot out dot print, um, and then I put the str inside, I'm not actually printing out just the string. Technically, what's happening is printing out string dot to string, right? That's what that's the method it's, uh, it's calling. It's calling the str dot to string method, and that every object has a dot to string method. And if you don't give the object a method to perform, for example, if you just do str and you don't give it the object, it automatically calls the to string method, and the to string method returns a string. So if I wanted to, I could do str dot to string, and then this would give me a string that I can store in a variable if I wanted to. So I just wanted to mention that real quick that every method Every object has a toString method, and that's important to know. So for a scanner, try it out yourselves. Um, create a scanner object, and inside the system.out.print, just put scan, you know, or whatever identifier name you gave your object, and you'll see it'll just print out some stuff to the screen, um, even though it's not, even though you never called the toString method, it automatically assumes you called the toString method. Now that might be just illegible stuff on the screen, but regardless, it doesn't give you an error, and that's the important thing. And that's just one thing I wanted to mention. So now let's go on and perform a few examples on uh, BlueJay. So now let's uh, now that we know our methods for a string class, let's try a few examples. So I've already gone and create uh, I created an objects class for us to uh, mess around with. So let's first create a string called Java, or right, uh, and assign it to Java. Next, let's print out a substring. So print out n, and we're going to do str dot substring, and we're going to do one. So this should give us everything from the first index. I mean, from the index of one all the way to the end. And just to make this easier, I'm going to type up the indexes right above the letter. So 0, 1, 2, 3, just like that. And then if I do this again, but now have my last letter, 1, 2, 3, this should give me the first two, because we said then the last index is exclusive. Now, let's um, use a dot equals method. So we see how those work. So we do dot equals, and let's try a lowercase, job, uh, lowercase j for Java. So we'll see if these two are equal, right? So str dot equals Java, and then we'll do the same thing, um, but instead we'll do an equal ignore case, equals ignore case, and then the last thing we'll print out is the length of the string. So str dot length, and length doesn't require any parameters. So here we have um, a few different substring, a few different methods we're using. Let's see how that works out. So the first one, it did as we were told. It goes from the first one to the last index. Oops. Uh, it goes from the first index to the last index. Um, or sorry, the index of one to the last index. So, for, so from the second to the last character. So that's Ava. The second one goes from the first to the second, which is A. Now equals, now Java is lowercase, and, so, and it's case sensitive, so it gives us false. But the second one gives us true because we told it to ignore case. And then lastly, we have our length for Java, which is 4. So uh, mess around with the string methods. There's loads more of string methods that you can look up simply, simply by typing uh, Java string methods. And you can use them however uh, you think fits best. Now, next thing I wanted to talk about is the math class. And the math class allows us to use more advanced functions such as cosines and sines and logarithms and powers and exponentiation min max all these amazing stuff you can look up the full documentation uh, online i'll probably link it down in the description too so first the math class is in the java library 
it's import java.lang.math. The nice thing is that java.lang package is automatically imported, right? Uh, we don't even have to type this out. But I'm just going to leave it here so that we know that java.lang.math, uh, this is the class that we're using. If I compile it, I don't get any errors. But if I don't include it, um, it will be all the same. Now here's the cool thing about math class, and this is like a weird exception to math class, is that math class you don't need to create an object for it. You can just use the methods automatically by just doing math dot and then whatever method you want, like cosine of 9, for example, right? And if I put this in a system dot out dot print, and I compile and I run it, it compiles fine, and it'll also run fine right it will just it will give me that value um and it's uh, something for the math class specifically and we'll talk about why in a much later video when we get to creating our own classes and methods but for math class um you don't have to make an object for it and kind of makes sense kind of uh kind of grateful for that because uh it would be kind of tedious to make an object for math class specifically because math doesn't really take any information you put in the numbers as parameters for the methods. So you have math.cosine, math.sine, um, tan, cotan, all of that stuff. And you even have log, you have power. It takes in two parameters, so three and two. Uh, you have square root, so S and that's abbreviated SQRT. So square root of four, for example, would give us two. And you have a loads more, and this, um, and the, the only reason I wanted to bring this up is because having access to more advanced math function is very useful. For example, if I wanted to program the quadratic formula, um, that the math class is very useful because I can have that square root, I can have the absolute value, um, and all of that different stuff. So I just want to introduce this. I'll link in the description uh, documentation to the math class, and I will probably pop up on the screen a quick reference to the most common math methods. But I just want to mention this as a whole. So that is it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.